Thank, Thank you very you. much uh, for uh, hosting me today. And uh, I'm very happy to, to, to join you in this uh, seventh international pediatric conference. My topic as um, um, uh, was said that it would be about um, something which is rare, but uh, you need to diagnose it early because it's usually an emergency. So uh, my topic is about a plastic anemia. This is um, a photograph of the Sultan Qaboos University on Saturday, of course, which uh, uh, no one is, is in the campus. So uh, a plastic anemia, actually, Paul Enrich deduced the concept of a plastic anemia in 1988 when he described a case of pregnant woman who died of bone marrow failure. But uh, it is not until 1904 that Antonari Schofer named this order as a plastic anemia. It was first linked to environmental exposure of benzene. In the First World War, it was a very um, um, uh, um, uh, common because many cases were diagnosed among uh, the USA soldiers uh, um, as they gave them malaria prophylaxis. And it is one of the um, treatments that may um, uh, cause a plastic anemia, acquired one. In the Second World War, again, there was another wave of a plastic anemia because of the use of the famous drug chloramphenicol when was, was resident, was one of the very uh, commonly used antibiotics nowadays it's no more um, available. So it's a ban, um, it's a plastic anemia, it's a bone marrow failure, um, uh, referred to pancytopenia in association when, with bone marrow hypoplasia or aplasia. So we have anemia, thrombocytopenia, neutropenia, which is pancytopenia, and it has to be associated with a bone marrow that is hypo or aplastic. It is a mis uh, misnomer, why? Because the disorder is not an anemia, actually. It is pancytopenia. And the bone marrow failure is the term that should be used in which, uh, uh, because it's a broader term, in which pancytopenia uh, can be caused by marrow replacement or myelodysplasia syndrome, in addition to other various causes of plastic anemia. What are the etiological causes? So um, usually defect uh, to um, um, uh, organ damage, um, uh, to the stem cells of the mar marrow microenvironment. Microenvir so we have um, a stem cell failure. And this stem cell failure can happen spontaneously in the stem cell, which is rare, or can happen due to an autoimmune um, uh, disorder. Usually the T cell attack the stem cell. So um, there will be, uh, as a result of that, qualitative loss in function as well as quantitative loss in number. So the number and function will be decreased. Um, it is of utmost importance to distinguish between acquired and inherited aplastic anemia. Why? Because this is a clinic, and a, although it's a clinical challenge, more than 80% of cases are acquired. But if you treat the acquired aplastic anemia um, and the child has got actually one of the congenital bone marrow failure, that this might be fatal to the child who's congenital. So any case of acquired aplastic anemia, even if it doesn't have any symptoms of congenital one, we have to screen for the congenital aplastic anemia. So we classify them acquired um, causes of bone marrow failure um, due to, as I told you, drugs like uh, uh, anti-malarials, chloramphenicol, anticonvulsants, uh, viral infections, the most common actually are listed here, Epstein, Barr, Hepatitis B virus, Hepatitis A, HIV, and Barvo. Uh, immune disorders like SLE, they can also be associated with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And um, uh, patients with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria might not present as the disease um, uh, says, paroxysmal nocturnal, they have a clone, and this clone of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria might not appear except after the diagnosis of plastic anemia and you start the um, uh, specific therapy. So in each case of a plastic anemia, we have to investigate for the PNH clone, and it should be in one of the investigation sent because one third of the uh, uh, causes of acquired aplastic anemia is due to PNH, even if clinically not manifest. And of course, the refractory cytopenia of a child with myelodysplastic syndromes. The inherited bone marrow failures, they are usually syndromic. They are usually associated with 
congenital anomalies and dysmorphic features. The most common is the Fanconi anemia, dyskeratosis congenita, Schwarzman diamond syndrome, and diamond duplexan aminemia. So these are the acquired causes of a plastic anemia. I'm not going to go through them, but I want to highlight again that the paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is represent one third of the cases plus the myelodysplasia. However, the most common cause are idiopathic. The others are more or less uh, not very common. Uh, the hematopoietic elements, through, so the hematopoietic elements, how to diagnose in the marrow, they are less than 25% and they are largely replaced with fat cells. So you can see uh, um, um, what you can see on the right hand side of the slide. You can see the fat cells in a bone marrow biopsy and these are the hematopoietic cells, which are very uh, occasional and uh, represent less than 25%. Normally, uh, the fat is less than 25%. Flow cytometry also can help by showing that the stem cells or the hematopoietic stem cells, which are CD, carry the CD34, is substantially reduced. And uh, uh, this mostly due to fast mediated apoptosis of the CD34 stem cells or the progenitor cells, which leads to stem cell depletion. And acquired plastic anemia is mostly, as I told you, an autoimmune disease. That's why the first line of therapy is immunosuppressive therapy. The human leukocyte antigen HLADR2 is overrepresented in many patients. If you are in doubt, you can send it to test for this antigen. A plastic anemia is mediated by expanded population of CD8 um, uh, 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 cytotoxic T cell, HLADR plus cytotoxic T lymphocyte that produce inhibitory toxicine, uh, tox, uh, cytokines, I'm sorry, like gamma interferon, TNF, which support, suppress the progenitor cell growth. What is the prognosis of acquired aplastic anemia? It's very important to consider it as medical emergency, particularly in patients who became very fast platelet transfusion dependent. I will tell you uh, why in a second. The outcome of patients with aplastic anemia has substantially improved because of improved supportive care. When I was a resident, a case of aplastic anemia, 10 to 15 days, usually they succumb because of either infection or hemorrhage. The supportive care was not as uh, much as we have nowadays. The estimated 10 year survival rate for the typical patient of aplastic anemia, they receive immunosuppression is 68% compared to 73% for hematopoietic stem cell transplant. But what is the difference? And the difference is not that much, it's only 5%. However, uh, the hematopoietic stem cell transplant is much faster than the immunosuppression. So in immunosuppression, if you give an immunosuppressive therapy, it might take four to eight weeks to work in a child with a plastic anemia. Uh, and um, but in bone marrow transplant, of course, you admit you, you uh, condition and immediately if you have match your donor, you transplant. However, there is significantly improved outcome over time for matched sibling and alternative donor, especially donors, especially we are lucky as pediatrician, especially with younger age. However, in cases of immunosuppression, late relapse and late clonal disease are risks. They may develop, as I will show you later. Um, leukemias or um, even myelodysplasia later. What is the management of acquired aplastic anemia? The mortality rate, uh, if you give supportive care, uh, care alone, is more than 70%. What we mean by supportive care, back your blood cell transfusion, keep the hemoglobin above 10, platelet count maintain above 20, and uh, treatment of infection. Avoid transfusion, which is very important clinical point, practical point from family members. Why? Because of possible sensitization against non HLA tissue antigen for possible donors. What this will do, it will increase the rate of rejection. Leukocyte reduction is very important. Why? It will prevent alloimmunization, it will prevent cytomegalovirus transmission, and it is the blood which will be given to child with a plastic anemia should be irradiated and should be leukocyte reduced. This is very important. If you cannot irradiate the blood, please don't give. In life-threatening neutropenic sepsis, um, irradiated granulocyte transfusion, it is in the guidelines. However, we never used that when we used it in the past for one or two patients, they developed severe reactions. So um, it has to be in really very well-prepared center. And this is a fact the coming sentence is a fact and 
it should be this statement is very important. Minimally transfused subjects do much better with HSC, uh, with hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. So as much as you can, the, the, so that's why we call it the medical emergency. Because if you transfuse more and more and more, not only you can get a mortality rate of 70%, but you can have a rejection of the bone marrow the disaster. Specific treatment should be instituted. So what about the immunosuppressive therapy? We use either anti cytokine globulin and so not either, both anti-ATG and cyclosporin. These are the first line therapy. Nowadays, they remove the steroids from the triple therapy, which was famous in the last two decades because of the side effects uh, become much more if you add steroids, but you can add some uh, low dose steroid in the beginning to reduce the um, uh, um, sensitization to ATG our sensitivity to uh, ATG. Immunosuppressive therapy is associated with an overall response, which is good uh, for children of around 60 to 80% and the five year survival rate of 75% in most. However, the immunosuppressive therapy, what we mean by event uh, fee survival is only below 50%. Why? Event fee survival means after you treat, they might develop PNH, they might develop um, uh, they might develop uh, uh, leukemias, they might develop clonal disease. Um, nowadays, we used to, to have, uh, to, to, uh, uh, we, uh, there is um, an evidence that the results and the outcome are much better with rabbit ATG, um, but also in the last two decades, horse ATG was preferred, and you know that horse ATG is very expensive, not only that, it is uh, hardly available, but they found better outcome now with rabbit, which is good news. The monotherapy with cyclosporin has been reported in India and in low resource uh, setting that it is effective in around 50%. So we have a patient, no resources, five milligram per kilo per day in two divided doses is very uh, good. But however, you should monitor the drug uh, therapeutic level uh, of cyclosporin at least once weekly. And this monotherapy with cyclosporin is effective. We, we had one a child who responded to uh, cyclosporin uh, therapy alone. Uh, uh, at least four to 12 weeks, as I told you, is usually needed to observe early improvement with immune suppressive therapy. Uh, however, the patient may continue to improve slowly. Later responses may also occur. 50% of patients respond by three months after immunosuppressive therapy and about 75% to take six months. So uh, you need supportive care really. And that's why BMT is preferred to immunosuppressive therapy because it is faster. Treatment usually continues for up to 12 months. And then it is very important clinical point. If you are going to taper, you taper very slowly by 25 milligram every three months thereafter, which uh, you, are, you, are, you are tapering uh, over one year almost most of the patients will need around 100. Um, um, also recently, thrombopoietin receptor agonist therapy, which is thrombopoietin analogues, like l bag has been uh, used um, in treatment of uh, aplastic anemia, uh, but as a second line therapy. However, nowadays also uh, in the clinical trials, it's shown benefits at the first line therapy. And the upfront use in pediatric patient um, uh, has been associated with hematologic response with monotherapy for thrombobac, which is really very good news. Romiplostin, which is another thrombopoietin analog. Uh, nowadays, they are running a clinical trial about the effectiveness of high-dose romiplostin, uh, 20 microgram per kilo per week in l which is a real high-dose in patients with uh, l thrombobag refractory aplastic anemia. So, they have been added to the protocol recently. Hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, best results from HLA matched sibling donor uh, to reduce the uh, graft versus host disease. Um, and it should be like we used to do it when we were resident that the bone marrow harvested from the bone marrow, not with the new techniques of peripheral blood uh, stem cell mobilization. Uh, why? Because the graft versus host disease is much less with the bone marrow. Uh, um, harvest rather than the preferred blood. And 
this is uh, good, um, uh, I mean, um, uh, good news to the uh, recipient, but not to the donor because it is much more painful. The rejection rate correlates positively with the number of transfusion, as I told you. So minimal transfusion, less rejection. Currently, ATG with cyclophosphamide uh, are the conditioning regimen for the, uh, you know, that in order to do transplant, you need to do conditioning and we use the ATG and cyclophosphamide. Uh, the unrelated can be uh, used if you don't have uh, a fully matched donor. Uh, however, um, you should do what we call high resolution allelic matching, which is very important if you are going to use MUD or matched and related donor. Uh, again, haploidentical has been approved also from the father or mother. Haploidentical can be done in refractory aplastic anemia. If you don't have a fully matched donor or a mud matched and related donor, you can do the non myeloplated with uh, uh, stem cell transplantation from haploidentical mother or father. Uh, uh, the, the most important before post hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is the potential fertility preservation, including the cryo observation of the uh, sperm and oocytes. Uh, very important, uh, so uh, because you know cyclophosphamide and it, um, it can uh, really reduce the fertility. So uh, this is done nowadays. This is a very fantastic um, uh, views from Oman. I hope the pandemic will finish and uh, we'll be able to get uh, the uh, tourists again to, um, and uh, to visit these nice places. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about inherited uh, bone marrow failure. Um, very quick review about them. Uh, so, um, 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 I start with this case scenario of four-year-old male presenting with uh, easy bruising and you find during the examination clinodactyly, which is obvious in this uh, little finger, and the, the, he has also multiple cafe olive spots uh, on his body, he's short, he has microphthalmia, um, and you examined his CBC, you found anemia or anemia and the thrombocytopenia. So, the diagnosis is very clear. This is a typical presentation of Fanconi anemia. It is an inherited bone marrow failure syndrome characterized by pancytopenia, predisposition to malignancy, as I will come later, and congenital malformation. This is the most common of all the inherited bone marrow failure. Um, one in 100,000 ethnic groups with higher than average prevalence are due to specific founder mutations. Uh, like in, um, in, in our uh, region also. The first description of Fanconi anemia was by Fanconi, uh, Guido Fanconi in 1927. The pathophysiology, Fanconi means one sentence, one statement, the defect in DNA repair. So this is the main pathophysiologic mechanism. What happened is the body cannot, you know, that uh, every uh, second in our body, the chromosome break and then reunion again. So um, the Fanconi basic pathophysiology is an effect in DNA repair. Cells cannot repair um, 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 interstandard cross links, and this will result in DNA damage. Uh, uh, the final outcome is a genomic instability, so there will be increased sensitivity to cytotoxic drugs, predisposition, predisposition to malignancy, and the most important loss of hematopoietic stem cell. This will result in bone marrow failure. But physiology is highlighted in this diagram. So you can see the chromatid breakage, and then there is faulty uh, uh, repair. So they make these radial structures, which are non functioning in the cell. So the stem cell will fail. The genetics, at least nowadays, we have 17 different Franconia anemia genes, mostly exomal recessive. Two exceptions we have uh, the FANCB gene is associated with excellent linked recessive inher inheritance, and also we have an autosomal inheritance. Um, um, uh, why it is important to identify the gene? Because there is a genotype phenotype correlation has been described for uh, Franconi anemia genes. These are the congenital uh, anomalies that you can see hyper or hypopigmentation, cafe or spots, short stature, thumb or other radial anomalies. You also very important renal, you need to do an ultrasound abdomen and also uh, to see the renal and also cardiac abnormalities and the axial skeletal abnormalities. They might have microcephaly, triangular fishes, short red neck, and also the pebble anomalies, what we call that. Uh, they might have eye malformations, ear abnormalities, conductive hearing loss because of middle ear abnormality. 
congenital heart disease, as I told you, PDA, the PDA is the most common VCD aortic coagulation. They can have the pituitary gland, they can have anomalies, hydrocephalus, and also GI anomalies, the most important is uh, and, and also GI and the imperfect Um, Of course, they have bone marrow failure, so they have thrombocytopenia followed by macrocytic anemia and then pancytopenia. There is a catch here in our community. Uh, alpha thalassemia trait is very uh, common. So sometimes you might not fi find the, the macrocytosis. And uh, uh, many of them, um, yani not many, but I have seen patients with Fanconi anemia with an MCV of 60 which is uh, because of the, of the alpha thalassemia. In some cases, only a single cell line will be involved, like typically thrombocytopenia, particularly early in life. Uh, we classify them to mild, moderate, and severe according to the platelet number mean. The most important is the platelet number. So if less than 30 severe, uh, between 30 and 50 uh, moderate, and uh, more than 50,000 is mild. And actually, uh, the platelets are the most important uh, because most of the patients come from hemorrhage. And myelodysplasia and leukemia, patients with um, Fanconi anemia, they have 6,000 uh, fold uh, risk uh, than general population for developing uh, MDS and uh, AML and 700 fold, sorry, um, uh, 6,000 fold for myelodysplasia, 700 fold for AML. Leukemia risk is higher in patients with bi-allelic mutation of um, uh, this phenotype, this genotype, FNACD1, BRCA2 uh, gene, which is associated with breast cancer. So, um, uh, in, in, in this, that's why it's important to do a mutation because the cumulative incidence of leukemia in these patients is, is 80%, very high. Uh, and also uh, developing MDS, you need to do karyotyping, and especially, particularly, you look for monocyte 7 and the gain of chromosome CT. The testing for Fanconi anemia is a mandatory in if you have any child present with bicytopenia or bancytopenia with hypocellular bone marrow in absence of malignancy or cytotoxic therapy. Why? Because um, um, even if there is no congenital anomalies, there are, uh, there are some Fanconi without any congenital anomalies. So um, uh, the treatment is totally different for both uh, acquired and congenital, and it might be lethal if you, if you uh, try uh, to treat a child with um, inherited bone marrow failure with a treatment of acquired plastic anemia. The, um, any the child who satisfy the vactyl H association or multiple other malformation like short stage peripheral or cyclostasis, which are strongly associated with Fanconi anemia, any relative um, who are being evaluated as a potential donor for uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This is very important. There are in the literature case reports our, about patients. They took a donor, and this donor came to be Fanconi. Uh, anemia, so you, you transplanted someone with idiopathic or acquired a plastic anemia from someone who has got Fanconi anemia. So any relative is going to be potential donor, he needs to be tested for Fanconi plastic anemia. The screening test is the assessment of chromosomal breakage, uh, what we call chromosomal breakage uh, lymphocyte stress test. We expose the, the lymphocytes to special dye, mitosin and this special dye will lead to chromosomal breakage. In, in, in Fanconi anemia, the chromosomal breakage will be from 30 to 100%. If the test is negative, we can do the test in the skin fibroblast. And the sequencing is recommended, as I told you, in all patients. How we treat, hematopoietic stem cell is the most curative therapy. If it's not available, androgen, oxymethylone, danazole. Danazole, in particular, and oxymethylone, they are associated with good response in the platelets. And usually we have many patients like um, um, who cannot have a bone marrow transplant done. They are doing very well. They become non-transfusion, non-platelet transfusion dependent by the use of danazole. However, side effects are many, virilization, muscularization, particularly in girls. Solid tumors can happen. Uh, so we need, we need to screen and prevent for skin cancer, liver tumor, uh, at the, um, uh, urogenital tumors and uh, GI cancers, breast cancers, of course. Now I'm going to move to the second. Uh, someone. Dr. Wally, Dr. Ah, Wally, five a couple, minutes. Dr. Wally, you get a couple of minutes. 
Okay, I'm about to finish because this is um, my last few slides. So this um, this is a child with uh, disc keratosis congenita with extensive leukopathy of the tongue, uh, the tongue and mild nail dystrophy, and his blood examination showed band cytopenia. So skin pigmentation, nail dystrophy, and oral leukopathy. Uh, the um, 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 pathophysiology. Most important is you, uh, you have to look at that there is, this is a telomere disease. So short the telomeres, uh, telo, uh, uh, telomere syndrome, and it will lead to impaired organ function, altered hemostasis, and inappropriate loss. The inheritance pattern is mostly autosomal dominant, and this is very bad, sad, because the whole family will be affected by one of these genes, and the most common is autosomal dominant. They have very much cancer redisposition. Diagnosis by telomere length analysis, molecular sequencing, and assessment of the marrow will have a bone marrow failure uh, and uh, uh, replaced almost by hand. The treatment, allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, um, also androgen therapy like danazole. They have a lot of pulmonary fibrosis, so they need pulmonologic evaluation. This is a nice picture from Sarala, Schwarzman diamond syndrome, bone marrow failure, exocrine, pancreatic dysfunction, and bone uh, abnormalities. So with that, I want to thank you for listening and hope to see you in Oman uh, soon, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wali. Uh, any questions from audience here? Uh, there are a few questions online. Uh, Dr. Wali, one of our colleagues online asking about the incidence and prognosis of plastic anemia associated with hepatitis A. Yeah, this is a very nice question. So hepatitis A and B in general, they, uh, they are associated with um, a plastic anemia. Um, uh, actually, we shouldn't screen because they will come into the practice. It, it is less than um, uh, 5%. However, uh, uh, less than 1%, I'm sorry. But however, these patients will, will come to the practice and you'll find that the, um, uh, they will come with a bleeding uh, or uh, with a chemosis, petechia purpura, usually thrombocytopenia is the first manifestation. And uh, um, you find in the past history that they had either hepatitis A or B virus uh, around uh, uh, more than one month back. So that's how you link the hepatitis A or uh, B to uh, the uh, occurrence of a plastic anemia. Another question from our colleagues online. Uh, can uh, Fanconi anemia present uh, with isolated band cytopenia without any syndrome? Yes, features? that's an excellent question. I highlighted that during my presentation. That's why any potential donor will have to screen for Fanconi anemia because Fanconi anemia can present only by, with band cytopenia. And not only that, Fanconi anemia can present as late as 60 years of age. There have been case report about Fanconi anemia presenting as bone marrow failure at the age of 60. So he doesn't have any manifestations and reached the age of 60, started to have bone marrow failure, the stress test and the, the gene was positive. So uh, Fanconi anemia can present very late. Yes, that's a true uh, phenomenon. Thank you for the question. Dr. Muhammad Jasimuddin from